alive. And I'm live. Hello, internet world. Let's see, I think my live is streaming. It looks good. Saying hello to everyone who is here right now. And anyone who might be watching the recording of this, this is day three of Dumbledore's Army Starseed Galactivation Workshops. And today's workshop is the one that we've probably all been work waiting for because we're going to be talking about psychic abilities and the starseed embodiment process and how we wake up to work with our higher dimensional galactic teams and other dimensional helpers like Sasquatch and the inner earth beings um, and how we cultivate our psychic abilities to allow us to weave and create impact and move energy in our own and our clients energy systems to create healing and further wholeness. Just as a side note, I am pretty tired today. <laughs> um, I've been kind of half napping all day and I'm still quite tired. And so, um, excuse me if I seem a little bit slower than I was the last couple of days. So let's get started. Um, so the last couple of workshops, as well as today's, we are breaking down the three major sections of our Starseed Superhero School. <laughs> and the first two sections focused a lot on our inner healing and the different dimensions that consciousness distortions and trauma exists in our body, as well as the different kinds of prison systems that have been in place in our culture and how these distortions are culturally accepted and they're really deep and accepted by people and our subconscious mind and how it's been really important for us to shake those things loose and learn how to completely heal and restore our divine sovereign creatorship. We talk about what that really means in our physical body, how these vessels were created to pull in cosmic conscious energy and literally interact with the fabric of reality itself. So if you have not seen the first two parts of this workshop, I highly recommend going to check that out first before watching this third one, um, because we're really building up to um, even talking about our psychic abilities, even though doing shamanic work is largely based on being able to perceive different dimensions of energy. And the reason that we don't talk about, you know, deeper and higher vibrational things like this until the third section is because our consciousness and our body is almost like a pyramid. And the foundation and the base of our pyramid is how grounded we are, how solid we feel, how safe we feel in our body and our environment, and how solid um, we feel inside of our own body. And if there are traumas and holes in our aura and you know unworthiness and instability, then these things um, create instability in our pyramid. And so if we begin to activate our higher centers, which are over here, then we begin to topple. And this is when you see people who become manic, who might become schizophrenic, who might become so ungrounded that they're running around, they're saying, I'm Jesus, you know, those kids up in Mount Shasta sometimes. <laughs> so the reason is that we begin tuning into way expanded fractals of ourself, receiving way more psychic information than our body is actually able to process through all of the density and the trauma that we have. And so that is why for the first major sections of our school, we're focusing on um, structuring and healing that strong foundation. And it's amazing because, like we were saying the last two days, by doing this inner healing, we're actually creating a library of healing techniques and ways to engage with these parts of ourself, these wounded, um, hurt parts of ourself, as a, um, so that they'll help us to connect with others, with humanity who have gone through similar traumas. So at this point in the journey, by the third session, we have really gone deep into creating that foundation for our sense of self. We have been cultivating a strong sense of self and really tackling any senses of insecurity 
unworthiness and um, self-doubt and all sorts of things like that. And at this point, we're feeling solid, like we are a wanted child in a expansive and delightful and ever abundant universe. This is how we're feeling. And so we're solid. Our lower half of our pyramid is really strong. We're ready to then take a step to open up our psychic abilities to the extent that we wouldn't be able to if that first two steps were not taken. So I think that our higher sense perceptions, they're not just existing in our mind. They're actually existing throughout our whole body and it's sometimes even non-local, is when we begin to tune into this field of consciousness that is beyond our own physical body, and when we move into recognizing that there is conscious and life force energy flowing through all quarks and electrons and um, aspects of the fabric of reality. So everything, wood, the wall, metals, you know, the trees, everything. And so when we're able to shift our, the frequency of our awareness, and usually, you know, we do this through learning to entrain our brainwave state, going into the theta brainwave state is basically expanding into that God, uh, God consciousness. And so a lot of um, our work in this section and in all of the guided meditations with the sound healing that I create, it's all helping us tune into that frequency or that brainwave state. And for those of you who enjoy listening to these songs or say, you know, you always start to feel a little bit differently when the sound frequencies are playing, it's because our brain is literally in training to the theta brainwave state, which is the state that we're kind of in more channeling those frequencies. And it allows us to shift our vantage point of viewing the reality from inside of our head and thinking that we are separate from the oneness of everything and shifting our awareness outside of that vantage point to being um, in the field of everything. And so this is a process that takes time and is one that requires um, not only practice, but for you to really create the correct space to explore it. So as we were talking about this pyramid, um, you know, speaking to the ones who will not be um, partaking in the mentorship and you're going to be exploring this yourself. I mean, I know that there are super rad starseeds who are about to take everything I'm saying and apply it in their own life without my mentorship. And that is incredible. So I'm just really wanting to stress that we have to have to work on um, the grounded and 3D material plane of our experience so that we can stay grounded as our psychic abilities open up. This is the most important tip that I can possibly give you. And I will just say that, you know, for my, my journey, I had been traveling, you know, all over the place for four or five years on these grid work trips. And I would make incremental um, shifts and expansion in my consciousness. But when I moved to the land and started living, you know, in my own space, and I, even though I lived in this tiny RV and there was hardly a working shower, um, I had my own space and a sense of stability. And that stability allowed my cap capabilities to open up in an accelerated way that I did not even expect, even though it was, you know, you could foresee it because my root chakra was really getting wide and stable and my foundation was being created. And so if you are wanting to experience more of your psychic abilities, just work on grounding and expanding and feeling safe and secure and present in the body because that's actually going to allow your body to perceive psychic information. And the science behind that, I just learned this the other night um, on Gaia TV, is that um, I think this was a... Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he was saying that when the body is in fear and in the sympathetic nervous system, which we all are if we're not grounded and we're not feeling secure in our physical body, then our psychic senses literally um, are not open, they're not activated because we have to be focusing in the 3D in order to survive. So if we figure out our survival needs, or at least bypass that process. You know, if you are a 
insane traveler who, I mean, I lived without money for lo the longest time and I was able to bypass that fear of survival by an insane level of trust in the universe that I was going to be given everything that I needed. And so if you're able to create and cultivate that level of trust in the universe, that can also create this sense of security. But what we want to do is bypass or resolve all of our fears and insecurities of scarcity and survival so that we're actually tuning into in the parasympathetic nervous system when our body is actually in a receptive mode and that is when we can actually connect with realms beyond the physical, beyond survival. So here I wanna talk about a lot of starseeds when they come to me, they're like, I've always felt like I'm from somewhere else and I've always felt like I'm here for a special mission. But when I start talking to other people and I notice that my family and my friends, they're not really awakening at all, it makes me doubt myself. It makes me feel like, you know, maybe I'm just crazy. Or maybe I'm just being egoic to feel like I'm here for something important at all. And so I want to bring this up because that is a very natural process of our awakening. And that at a certain point, you will have to consciously be aware of every time those responses come up. Because how we respond to thoughts and external stimuli is what makes up our reality. So if you have a thought and you say, well, I think I'm from a different planet, you can immediately respond with, oh, I must just be crazy. And if that's your usual response, the next time you can you know, consciously conjure, intention intentionally bring up this thought that, you know, I think I'm a starseed. And instead of responding to it right away, choose to just be in that space. Choose to just sit with that thought for a moment without any response and without any judgment at all. And from that opening, that could be your portal into an exploration of an energy that is intuitively coming up for you. And so I feel like I'm really lucky because when this voice in 2013, when this voice came to me in that taxi cab and it said, where are you from? And I heard the vibrations Andromeda come through my vessel. There was no part of me that was like, what? That can't be right. Because my whole body just felt, it was like, well, you know, finally everything makes sense. You know, finally, I understand why I've been such a weirdo my whole life. And I felt like I'm in this weird place where everybody else feels like it's normal. And I just think it's weird. So I'm sure that is a resonant feeling in all of us. And nurturing those feelings of authentic expression, how we authentically feel instead of what we feel like other people, how other people will judge, judge us if we feel a certain way. We're wanting to pretend to feel things to fit into other people's paradigm, allowing us, giving ourselves the space to just sit with how we truly feel. And if you're somebody that truly feels like you are here for a mission and you are here from somewhere else and you have special skills, then that feeling actually becomes a corridor in which if you walk through it, you will continue to discover things, right? So it's this curiosity that we um, begin to work with instead of that resistance. So opening up to that curiosity is the first step. So then we've started the process of acceptance and integration, basically. We stopped the resistance, which is basically our self responding in fear, responding out of the unknown, responding in a desire to be accepted by our community to a place of responding from our authentic feelings, our true feelings. And when we begin to accept our intuitive hunch, our feeling, that we are actually a starseed and that we're here to do something. We shift our energy from resisting to exploration. And from resistance, we switch the direction into curiosity. And now we're looking at the world through the lens of that curiosity. And I bet you things are actually gonna make way more sense than they ever have because my feeling, even before I ever woke up, was that everything in this world is upside down. You know, we have children who are the most creative beings from 
you know, um, evolved places that are the next stage of our human evolution. You know, they are the next phase of evolution. And we're trying to put them in this box, keeping them from being themselves, keeping them from allowing them to bring in creativity for us to learn from, right? These are like very intuitive things. And I, I just noticed that, you know, say, you know, a lot of plants, they're illegal. And these plant medicines, they belong to all these ancient indigenous cultures and they were used for connecting with spirit and for healing and yet they were illegal. And so all of these things did not make sense. And now that we have accepted that we are maybe actually here for an important mission, we can start to integrate the fact that the false matrix is really odd and we can actually begin to break it down. Um, and that process of breaking it down in our own consciousness, perceiving the reality with our own consciousness is what then begins the activation of our uh, specific starseed missions. So I do have a copy of my book with me today, I Am Starseed. Um, it is chronicling the story of the first seven years of my starseed awakening. And it just speaks about how everything that I'm telling you right now, you know, about the artificial matrix and how it is a watered down version of a satanic culture that has been created to enslave humanity. All of those things have been things that I discovered through my own eyes. And to I kid you not, all of this was inspired when I um, dropped out of high school and I was trying to get my high school diploma by doing these online courses. In one class I took, it was an anthropology class. And I remember my homework assignment, it was to um, write this essay. It was like, if you were an alien on earth here to do these anthropological studies, um, how would you go about your research? And the examples that they gave were like, dating show on TV. And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. I think this is legit. Like, I think something is speaking to me through this 11th grade anthropology paper. <laughs> and so I quit school again. I was like, I'm gone. I got to go and do my research now for real. You know, I don't have to report to these people. So um, what happened was my guide started telling me to go to the shopping mall. And I would say, I'm not going to the shopping mall. The shopping mall sucks. People just want to buy plastic things that were made, you know, unconsciously. And people are just eating sugar and all sorts of processed stuff. I don't want to go to the mall. And of course, they would just be so insistent that I think at the time, my parents actually lived across the street from one of the biggest malls in the, um, in the province. And so I went and I just sat in the mall. I remember I had my little cup of french fries because I was saying, I was like, heck it, you know. And so I was sitting in the food court and all of a sudden my psychic abilities would come on online and I would start to scan everybody's energy bodies and I would start to scan. I would just perceive the reality inside my own head and come to these conclusions about how, you know, there's all these blockages specifically in the crown chakra and the root chakra, how these humans were not connected to source and they were not connected to the earth, and they were exchanging then their energy instead of this free flow of energy with the organic creation, because they were blocked from the two ends, they were literally giving and receiving and exchanging energy with this artificial overlay of a reality that wasn't actually connected to the organic reality at all. And so then over time, these psychic abilities continue to develop by my guys encouraging me to just go and sit on the subway train <laughs> and again scanning my reality and all the ads and all of the subtle socio-cultural expressions that were in just mundane reality and I begin to piece it all together you know this adventure led me to go to a concert of Ariana Grande where I got to perceive the high level um, mind control rituals that these people are doing and I feel like going into the world to do these um, missions of perceiving was really part of my work because first of all, there wasn't a lot of information about this kind of stuff on the internet. And second of all, everything that I was seeing had this weird entertainment angle to it that was like, 
breaking news, this is happening, the government sucks and it's killing people and people are being controlled. Oh my God, we got to overthrow it. And it didn't really have any substance to it. It was like there was nothing on, um, there was nobody saying like, okay, this is what's literally happening in our physical world and here's what we need to do about it from a multidimensional perspective. So I really felt like it was my job to literally go into the world and just look at things, perceive things, take notes, create a psychic library of frequencies that are being corrected and thus be able to relay to you what we're doing on Earth, what our starseed mission is, not just in the 3D, but multidimensionally, as in we are plugging this artificial matrix back into the organic. We're pulling all the people that are existing in this false reality, this plastic world, that was created for a reason, that was created so we could come into resolution about certain things in the universe. And I tell this story in day one's workshop, but ultimately we're here to reconnect people, to assist people in their healing and journey from the false matrix back to the Gaia matrix. And the best way to do this I have found is to gain the ability to hold energetic space to be able to perceive energy, to literally see the energy body of a person and to see where their channels are disconnected and blocked and to literally plug them back in. <laughs> and so, of course, then through doing that, I mean, I realized that there's no way we could do that for everyone. And the process of um, plugging ourselves back into the, the universe is actually quite exhilarating. I mean, you can call me a nerd for sure. I'm a huge energy healing nerd. That is what I am. But the process I find of beginning to stream more and more orga organic life force energy through my body is actually quite exhilarating. Even when it could suck sometimes, even when, when we're processing certain painful things, it could be really uncomfortable. So in this process of gaining multidimensional sight, we are literally vibrationally and energetically replugging ourselves back into the organic, into the cosmic matrix. And through that process, being able to assist others and also show everyone, all the humans, how to do it. And I feel that this group of people that's coming in for the mentorship, we're really here to do a massive replugging for the collective. A lot of us carry different psychic um, technologies that through our work together are going to open up that are going to activate, and we're actually going to be working on the major ley line and energy body systems of the earth because all of human consciousness is actually connected to the ley line system. That is how we designed it. Um, it was always meant to be this unifying river system of consciousness energy that we can pulse evolutionary um, pulses through that brings humanity into different levels of its awakening. And that ley line system had been hijacked, the old ley line system. And that is why you will see churches and military bases and prisons and all sorts of things literally on major ley line intersections. It's because these beings that created the prison system, they were fully aware of the metaphysics of the earth and of human consciousness, and they knew and if they place super low vibrational and even traumatic institutions on top of the ley lines, that this would actually become a mind control system. The ley line system itself would help them mind control everyone. And so again, all of these things, um, I talk about the stories of how I come to discover these things and the work that I have been doing with my team to correct those things. Um, in my book, I Am Starseed, it's quite... Good. There's a lot of grammar mistakes in it, um, and I'm on my way to fixing them. But <clears throat> anyway, so we will be doing a lot of this work together in our um, course container. And this third, this third section, it's really like a psychic playground because when I'm speaking, I'm actually just articulating the psychic energy that's coming through. And so half the time, it doesn't even matter if you're listening to what I'm saying, or sometimes it just sounds like I'm just randomly saying things. 
because the sound vibrations is actually transmitting the frequency of what is being shared. And so we're specifically talking about, sorry, I just saw a comment and um, <laughs> I love all of you so much. So, um, I'm going to be communicating and, and pulling in the frequencies of different um, allies that we work with. So, so like the Galactics and, <laughs> sorry, the Galactics and Sasquatch and the Inner Earth Beings. And one thing that I'm really wanting to iterate is that in the past, when we're working with um, helpers that we perceive as being these powerful, masterful beings, and we ask them to come help. There's almost this program of being, oh, I'm this lowly, unworthy being, and please come and help me. You know, I'm such a sorry victim, and I can't do anything on my own, so please come and help me. And I feel that that energy is kind of going outdated, and that is even more powerful to work in this way we, where we are calling forth assistance in the place where we are allies, in the, friend, in the place where we are friends, in the place where we are family, and that there is actually legitimate connection and love. So every time that I have sat with you know, plant medicines like ayahuasca, my experiences has always been about good work. You know, she would take me into the ley lines of the earth. We would begin to unravel traumatic timelines and you know, allow beings to transfer into the other side and things like this. And it's always a bit about a friendship, you know, a collaboration. And I feel that actually oftentimes when we begin to pray and call for help, it's almost, you know, I guess the higher beings really understand. And what they're saying is that, you know, we're equals and we're here to help because we're here to, we're on the same mission, essentially. The plants and us, we both want the earth to once again thrive. We both want the pollution and the destruction of nature to stop. And so we're really working together. And through that allyship, it opens up a space for there to be more dimensions to the relationship, more experiences to the relationship, more adventures. Um, okay. So, I want to talk about how integration is a downward energy. So, ooh. sorry guys, I'm really tired. <laughs> um, I feel like I've been waking up like way more tired than when I went to sleep lately for like weeks on end now. And I know that a lot of people are feeling this and I feel like the reason is we're actually preparing a lot of spaces in the astral plane. Um, to prepare for beings who might travel there for healing, beings that, you know, will really need some help <laughs> in their coming back to sourceness. So I feel like we're all pre preparing for that in the astral. And so it's really like here for me to be in the physical right now, but I'm really happy to be here with all of you. And we're going to be doing this work <laughs> together Um one interesting thing is I feel like that, um, I mean, this mentorship, this, this space, it's just so like spacecraft feeling. It's almost like there's like a pod of us and we're just being called together. And the vision that I was seeing was that there was a spacecraft that um, crashed on the, the, the planet and we, we were all in the ship and it like crash landed and we all have like kind of concussions <laughs> and we're like oh crap like who are we what are we doing and we're just like patching each other up in this container so we can get solid and do our work and um one thing that was coming through last night um and I'm probably going to make a video just about this to share in the mentorship uh, forum space but I had a really tough night last night. I was just heartbroken and I couldn't really function really. My physical body was just like really upset. And I realized that 
um, that this container, it's really people who are coming together and I mean, I'm going to be supporting you to becoming superheroes and you are all here to support me through my healing um, and to complete this work that I have been doing with Kara. And I feel like it's been really hard for me to um, maintain, uh, maintain the Stargate components that she brought in because of how heartbroken I am, my human self. <laughs> And it's actually incredible that I have even been able to function and to do those things. And I do feel like for the last months, I have been really isolating myself. And I feel like that when this group begins, I'm really gonna be just focusing on working with you guys, working with this group of people in this really closed, safe space so that, you know, all of these energies that Kara brought through can actually be anchored. Um, and I feel like this is like kind of like a deep level of mystery school. I mean, that's really what it is. It really is a mystery school. Like there's no ounce of mundaneness inside of it because I've literally experienced through this body a master coming in and being born and sharing with me the mechanics of the universe and how life exists and how through this heartbreak we can transform density into higher existences of ourselves. And it's like this space is going to bring us all there. And I am recognizing just last night, I recognize that I literally, I can't do this myself. And I realized even in this now moment as I'm speaking, and something totally just like took me over to speak these things. <laughs> um, that I'm just humbled and so honored and grateful that so many people have been responding to this container. Um, just like in the greatest vibrations, like pure love and excitement and true recognition for what it is. And so Kara and I are just really grateful and I'm just so relieved that you have all shown up to you know, go on this adventure with me. I have an inkling of an idea what's going to happen, but usually with these containers, what I say is like I'm acting as an oracle for these frequencies to come in, but the healings, I'm experiencing them too as they come through my body. <laughs> And the activations and the integrations, like I am continually expanding and growing with you as this energy is coming through. And so um, I feel that one of the most important things for me right now is to have true, vulnerable, and intimate heart-to-heart -heart relationships with my tribe. Um, and I feel that that's really going to help me heal this human part of myself, even as we do this planetary work, even as we anchor these higher vibrational frequencies, even as we go through the ascension, I feel like, you know, it's almost like my soul has been pulled up into that, into that place where Kara is, into the fourth density, into the future earth, whatever you want to say. And I'm just having a hard time I mean, I feel like I'm actually doing great, but I'm also having a hard time just like aligning it with my human. And I feel like the human part just needs to feel allyship with my family to know that, you know, this is not, it's just a bit crazy, okay? It's just a bit, it's just a bit crazy. And we're integrating, <laughs> we're integrating, you know? It's like, oh, this crazy galactic soul told me where it, came from and then literally came through this body and told me I had to give birth to her by myself with my husband in my bedroom and then she activated a freaking stargate and then she left <laughs> and it's like yes like that's actually legitimately what happened and I'm using all of these tools that I have to integrate that and I'm grateful that the space is being called 
so that we can anchor the opening, that blessing that we are receiving from this master being and that we don't have to be alone in that process. So that went in a way different direction than I was intending to go with this <laughs> with this talk, but I also felt like it was important to just be as it is. So here we are. And um, yeah, I'm happy and sad. <laughs> um, is there any questions? Um, yeah, I'm going to need a lot of help to heal my heart. And my higher heart is doing great. <laughs> the cosmic love is feeling amazing. And my, my earth heart, I'm having a hard time being here. I have been, I have been working a lot. I have been working a lot to distract myself from how my human is feeling. And so... I do want you guys to keep me accountable and I'm going to share this story specifically in the course container because it's a little bit too intimate. Um, but I will share, you know, a deeper part of my story here. Um, but yeah, I, I, need, I need real humanness to be human <laughs> and we're all going to be human together while we, become superheroes to save the world. So that's what we're doing. And if you are excited about that, then join the mentorship. So integration is a downward energy. Um, we're talking about the walk-in process of our higher self, the walk-in process of our true soul. And I feel that begins in the soul star chakra right over here. And in we're going to have a guided meditation that takes us up in that space so we can experience the core frequency of our own soul's essence. And when we begin to bring that energy down into the body is when we'll, I mean, there's been times when new fragments have come into my body and I'll literally look down my hand and be like, whoa, what the heck are these? Like, I've never been here before. <laughs> and so we're literally integrating new fragments original fragments of our soul essence into our body. And I feel that when we make um, an awareness, like a recognition, like, oh, trees have an aura, like something that's always been real, but we didn't realize was real. And then we re-realize that it is some way. And so we need to actually rewire our consciousness to integrate that as the new, the new normal. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. Okay, so our, our new normal is when we begin to integrate these things. And when we realize something, let's take that example again. There's a tree out there that's just like, hey. Um, we're like, oh, trees can actually talk. Like trees um, can have telepathic communication with us. So we pull that literally down through our body to set it to be the new normal of our reality, and that is a process of integration. So the classes are on Zoom. They are Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Mountain Time USA, and all the recordings will be available. Um, and so, you can start, exactly. Okay, so, is there any other comments or questions? I have just one more thing on my notepad here, and it says the difference between to know and to know, spelled G-N-O. And I think that there's a certain hardness to the first no. It's like when the human thinks they know something, you know, like the earth is the center of the universe. And it's like, we, we just know that because it's science and that's what we've been taught and we know it and it's solid and it's hard and rigid. It's like nothing can get through and nothing to go in. And then there's, there is to know, like GNO, where it becomes this inner, it comes from the inside bursting out and 
it seems like this fluid communication that flows, that can change, that feels good in the moment, but or it could also change, but not that that it's finite, or not that it could just easily change, but we're not so attached to it, let's say. And so it's important for us to move again with that fluidity of knowing, because in healing sessions, things are gonna come up really quickly. And you're gonna realize that you'll know things that you didn't know before. And so to, it's basically like mental or psychic gymnastics where you're just flowing, you're able to transition with the present moment as quickly as the spirit or as the space or as the energy wants to move. And so this is another energy we're gonna be cultivating it's even silly to just talk about these things, but as I was saying, this entire container is a psychic transmission. So the things that we're talking about, we're actually literally doing inner chi kung fu to cultivate those energies. <laughs> so it's like joining a psychic gym membership, I guess. <laughs> um, so let's see. Well, this including our sexual trauma, absolutely. So if you haven't seen yesterday, Yesterday's video was entirely about sexuality. Um, oh, so Sedona is actually in Pacific time right now. A good city for conversion would be um, Denver, Denver, Colorado. Um, so let's see. How much time do we have to sign up for the class? So we, I think there's 30 something spots left. Um, because we have a limit of 144, even though Spirit was saying that maybe we'll let it flow a little bit. I'm not really sure. It just depends on how we're feeling. So as of now, there are 33, let's say 30-something more tickets. Um, so let's see. What is your time zone? Mountain time, USA. And... Yes, so the link to join is in the description or www.earthstar.tk slash mentorship. And um, here's a visual of my book again, I Am Starseed. I'm really not promoting these because I want to make money or because I think I'm cool, but actually because these books, I mean, the reason why I wrote it was to help you remember your mission because this is a story of how I came to remember the mission. So I'm writing my psychic perceptions of everything. And so I um, definitely recommend going on this journey. It's quite great, especially if you're wondering what your mission is. That will help uh, clarify things. Shall we? Is there anything we should be doing to prepare for this class? Um, nothing in specific. It's always great to do your inner work, you know, um, check out more of the videos. Um, I mean, I feel like I just find myself repeating myself sometimes because, you know, these teachings are so simple. We scan, we clear, we restore. And so the more Qigong, the more meditation that you do, it's not going to hurt. <laughs> um, but as we get closer to, so beginning of November, let's say, I'm going to start posting more um, practices and different supportive materials onto our course forum. Um, it's just that I've been, I mean, I just got back into working this month after my maternity leave. Um, and so it's kind of been crazy. And Judith, yes, the book is on my website, but it'll take you to Amazon because it's the cheapest way for it to get to you. Oh, <laughs> Um, the first class is November 21st, November 21st on Saturday. And the classes will be at least 90 minutes, but I do, I mean, I'm just so excited about this container that I'm going to be creating all sorts of bonus content. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did, you know, or um, Oracle sound healing ceremonies on the regular on top of beside the classes. Um, and having, you know, gatherings and parties and movie screenings, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, there's even an app that you can get that will connect you in with the forum. So you can, like, text your friends from class and comment on the forum just from this app. Um, 
it's really going to be cool to just be in this space with everyone, you know, like Hogwarts. <laughs> Thank you, Candice. You're my angel in so many ways. And yes, classes will be recorded. <sighs> I totally just went on a ramble, you guys. I didn't mean to say those things. <laughs> well, I feel that it's good because this is another strand that's woven into the space. And I feel like, again, the space is calling in such specific people that I guess it's really good to just be really clear about the vibration that we're sending out. And so that is all for today. And I just love being in the space with all of you that I don't even want to leave. <laughs> so I think if you just go to your app store and search Wix, you'll be able to download the app and then send me a message and I'll send you the, um, the code for our community. I'm gonna sort all of this out and send out a collective email. Um, so to get us all signed up on that app. Thank you, family. All right. Bye for now.